five. Welcome, students, to Monk Meditation. The show about monks in the world of Warcraft. We have not one, but two new Brewmasters joining the crew. We'll tell you how to squash some bugs, and we're going to talk some alpha patch notes. This is Monk Meditation, episode 23. Here's your host, Chai T. Welcome one and all to the show All About Monks. I'm Chai T from Airy Peak US. We have a new overlay, a new intro video, so if you're listening to the podcast, go back and check out the first few minutes of the video at least. First off, let's go to our regular crew because we have a whole bunch of information I want to get to. So starting out with our heroically hearing, he, he, hearing, hearing, healing, Miss Weaver, now Yuki. How you doing, man? I'm good. I hear you fine. Thanks uh, for asking. Um, good to be back. How are you guys doing? Oh, doing great. Let's go now to our brewmaster who'd rather be, uh, go see Huey Lewis than Raid, Daikatsu. Oh, oh, hi. Hi, guys. Sorry. I was just enjoying Watch Dogs here. Which podcast is this? Monk Meditation! All Yay. right, monks. Go monks. All right, now to the monk who likes rolling near security guards. Air. Rolling? What, what does that even mean? It means a certain video of yours got leaked out, sir. Hmm, I'll have to, I'll have to take a look at that. Because... <laughs> huh. Anyways, hey, hey, good morning, everybody from Nagoya, Japan. It's good to be back. Good to be seeing all of your friendly faces today. Good to be monking about, as it were. All right, and last but not least, we go to one of our new brewmasters, Guan Shu. Welcome back to the show, Adam. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. I'm, I'm glad to be uh, on the show. I Actually, it's funny. I was telling uh, Dekatsu when he was up at PAX East that when I uh, first got into the alpha, not the alpha, the beta for uh, Mr. Pandaria, I was going to do a, uh, a monk minute, and then all of a sudden I heard Chai T on uh, CTR, and I was like, man, now he took what I wanted to do, and now I finally get to be on the monk podcast. I'm so excited right now. I'm super excited. <laughs> Am I the only one that can hear Chai? No, you're good. Oh. Where's Chai? Okay. Yeah, All right, and that right. overlay that we have is thanks to uh, thanks to Adam. So thank you so much for joining us. We welcome you back with open arms. Oh, I'm glad to help out. Uh, I've done a couple overlays in my time, and when you said you needed one, I was like, getting right on that for you. <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, let's check in with tonight's host on how WoW is now with. Let me make sure I have the right sounder. Here we go. Storm, <laughs> Earth, <laughs> and fire! <laughs> All right, I'm going to start off with Daikatsu. How is WoW going for you, man? You know, I've kind of taken a little bit of a break recently. Like Chai said, on Friday I went to go see Huey Lewis at uh, Universal Studios Orlando, and that was a lot of fun. Um, mainly at the moment, we're just kind of raiding. We finally got Garage down for the second time with our new makeup, so we're supposed to enter Heroics soon. Yes, I am looking forward to doing that. We, uh, we're going to have some work to do there, but... Wait, Duke, Duke, I thought you said you were done. You know, you beat Garage. Game is done. Heroics is <laughs> better. I, th I thought you went on this pretty long explanation about how you're done. You, your f time is free. Are, are, are you reversing said proposal? No, I still think heroics don't really matter to me. Uh, I understand they matter to other people. For me, it's just I need something <laughs> to do until December. <laughs> and it's either that or unsub, and I don't want to unsub. Don't want to unsub. No, no, no. Unsub is death. All right, Air, how is WoW going for you, sir? It's going well. The new team working as intended. It is. <laughs> Actually, is working yeah. as intended? No, it's great. Um, our second week, uh, we're running Heroics, um, and uh, we're right now 6 of 14 Heroic. So we have three new bosses and a chopping block um, this last day, and uh, no problem. We got we got up through Iron Juggernaut. So, um, 
it's things are looking bright. Everyone's doing a really good job. We're uh, still recruiting. If you are wondering about that, check out the CTR team pages. But um, helping to get a couple more bosses down next week and start pushing into the more difficult heroics. So it's been a good week. And I have 9,999 problems, but a bone white raptor ain't one of them. Oh, grats, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still need so. to work on that. Uh, now, Yuki, how's stuff. WoW going for you? Uh, what's the word I need to use? Oh, squee! <laughs> squee. <laughs> Edamame Enterprise is, what, 5 out of 14 heroic now. Uh, soon to be 6 out of 14. Um, we were progressing on Iron Jugs Thursday, and uh, I think two or three times we got them down to 20%. So uh, getting used to the healing cooldowns, because that's very, very healing intensive fight on heroic. Um, once we get used to that and everything connects just like the other five fights, we're going to get it down. And then the, uh, I guess we'll move on to Shaman's Heroic. I heard that was fun. Oh, yeah. Have fun with that one. Oh, I, want, I want someone to capture his squee. <laughs> get it as a gif. I need that as a gif. Get on that. I'm sure our crew <laughs> will be well on that. All right. Once you, how is WoW going for you, sir? Well, actually, uh, WoW's well, been going really well for me lately. Um, for those of you who don't know, which I think is pretty much everyone, um, I've been in a raid team for probably about two years, and then when Siege of Ogremar kind of started up, we kind of started splitting apart. We Some people went with the first raid team because we have two teams in the guild that I play on. And, you know, we've just been struggling just to get bodies in. So for Siege of Ogremar, we pretty much were getting to Galacras and just, like, dive bombing. Like, we couldn't do anything. Uh, so over the past uh, two weeks, actually, we've been able to go from barely getting through Galacross to starting to pretty much work our way all the way up to Thok by switching from two nights to one night and finding two or three good DPS to kind of go with us. So it's been really exciting. We're, we're pushing through content where before we were kind of at a standstill, unfortunately. Um, luckily for me, uh, being as though I, we have the two raid teams, uh, the other raid team very much needed a tank from time to time. So I've, I've ran with them before. And, uh, you know, to get some of the later bosses down. So I'm excited to actually have a raid team of together and moving forward and hopefully getting to heroic content in the next, like, three weeks or so. Because we've been, you know, beating things down pretty well. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Well, Rolling Thunder. Uh, we were planning to do heroics this week, as Duke said, but uh, we ended up missing three different people. So we decided not to really start heroics with a pug group. Uh, so we tried, we were just shooting for a full clear. We just wanted to do a full clear in one night. Uh, unfortunately, the lag boss hit us hard. If any of you were on Airy Peak on Friday, you know what I'm talking about. Um, our entire battle net list would go offline and then back online, and it would say there were three of each person online, and we were getting messages saying that our friends list was exceeded. Uh, we had people that were getting disconnected at random people that mm -hmm. uh, had 8,000 millisecond lag uh, so it wiped us on Shav Pride I'm surprised it didn't wipe us more often but it delayed our polls by 10, 15, 20 minutes um, while we were getting that all cleared up so we only got to Nazgrim but we got uh, Evelyn our healer, uh, the shield from uh, Norishen that she has been wanting since the first time we killed him in September so <laughs> At least it wasn't a total waste of time. So other than raiding, uh, have you guys been taking advantage of that 100% Valor buff? Not I at all. I have been logged in. Yes. <laughs> only to upgrade my heroic gear. That's it. Yeah. I, I Valor capped quite quickly. I just did the, the stuff out on the Timeless Isle. But um, over the weekend, my plan was, oh, okay, well, I've got three different characters stuck on that test of Valor. Um, yep. for the for the legendary cape. I'm like, all right, now's the time. I'm going to log in, just get through like heroic scenarios or LFR or something like that, mm -hmm. get my valor. And I log in, go to Timeless Isle, kill one thing. I'm like, eh, no. But it's so <laughs> quick. I mean, I got capped on my druid with, I think, only eight dungeons. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's nothing. Yeah, Especially I'm not if on, you're a I'm healer or a tank. Peak, I mean, though, is the thing, so I have a hard time getting grouped together. You see, you see, my, uh, I, I'm... I've been very lucky in these early heroics that I've already had two new pieces of heroic Warforged gear drop. Wow. That I didn't wow. have before. 
in 10 man. How? So there goes so, all your valor. There goes all my valor. So my character is capped, my main is capped within with un, under an hour that first that Tuesday server hit mm -hmm. capped. Yep. Next tune gets capped doing the the legendary quest line. So I get this awesome buff and I have no reason to use it. Yep. Because I'm already capped mm -hmm. a week earlier. Mhm. Mm so now but if, this if, week this week you'll only cap in half an hour and seven hours so yeah that's that is exciting i just wish they would raise the cap yeah that would be nice but... give it give us 100 percent easier valor and you know maybe for those six sadistic people allow us to get ten thousand valor in a week why not <laughs> some of us need <laughs> that just doing I, heroic scenarios i don't think in, they'll do that no. I don't think they'll do that, but if it was ever the right time to do that, that would be now because it's not like you need gear with Valor. Right. Ex there's exactly. not like you need gear. Who wants to play this other game that just came out recently? I'd rather cap 10,000 Valor on all my tunes personally. But You know, if Blizzard is anything, they are supportive of self-destructive habits. Right. <laughs> yeah, they say they're not. They don't want to handhold us. That's why they have a cap. Right. So that's what they say, but really just see what happens. See see how much we like it. Alright, well I think it's time now to get caught up in the crazy whirlwind of WoW news in Dizzy Haze. So as we were just talking about, uh, Heart of the Valor is this 100% Valor buff, so every uh, point of Valor you would normally get, you would get double that, up to your cap mm -hmm. of 1,000. Uh, and, and it does stack with the 50% buff that you get, so... Yep. So if you're getting, nice. uh, you're getting like a, I think it's 125, 150 percent valor. Yep, 150. If you're on the, if you have a character capped on that server, so that is going to be good through June 10th. So next Tuesday, so you've got a full week to take advantage of that. And we also had a reveal of tier 17. Let's show yes. people in the chat room, in the dojo, what that looks like. So if this you've video ever is wanted to look, MMO champion. If you've ever wanted to look like an iron golem in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what are you guys' thoughts on this? Awesome. The, it's the red, it's got red and a blue, and I'm assuming that's going to be heroic and other difficulties. Or no, mythical. normal no, no, and heroic. They, they've done the, um, the different, you have a different tier set for mythic, okay. a different tier set for uh, heroic and normal, and an LFR set. So yeah. what and then, is and the dungeon set? What's the difference between the colors? Then there was a red and a blue being shown here. Normal and heroic. Said, yeah. Okay, normal and heroic are different colors, that's but the normal and heroic is going to have a, a different. It, it's essentially going to be a, a remix of this. That's going to make it a bit more mythic. So you'll probably see larger shoulders and a lot uglier. Right. I'm imagining more movement <laughs> within things itself. Uh, yeah, the like animation the shoulders will hover fire. and stuff like that. But the Paladin ones do that now, where it has a shield that kind of pops out and the shoulders move around, and it's actually fairly nice. I yeah. don't like this set at all. I, Th I don't Drain understand I this set at all. What? I don't understand how monks are wearing plate shoulders and plate gloves, and That's then the rock. rest of their body is leather. It, 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 even better, it's rock. That means it's heavier. Right. Even Could worse. Be pumice. Yeah, I mean, the the ropes <laughs> around pumice. the shoulders are not too bad, but the helm is just, what? Yeah, well, I don't like panda, I feel sorry. It's like your panda got <laughs> trapped in a in a mining cave, cave in, and he punched his way out. Yeah. And when he came out, he said, oh, well, I mean, these kind of fit. I'll just keep wearing them. Right. <laughs> and he basically the pulled the... Uh, the miner's light in front of his face so that we didn't help him see better. <laughs> right, because, you know, obviously when you're mining, you want a giant green glowing spear coming out of your forehead. And no you know, eyes. You can't see no eyes. eyes at all. No. So. If, if, you, if you think about monks as a group, you know, the, the archetype, archetypes? Archetype, archetypes. Yeah. The different styles. A monk usually, you know, we have, we have ninjas. We have rogues. Rogues are ninjas. Right. Seriously. No, so, rogues take our gear. Yeah, okay, they ninjas. do that. Scum, yes. Anyways, um, <laughs> so monks, the only time you ever see a monk is some kind of piece of cloth, not even leather really, you know, maybe some leather armor, like very small pieces, you're very nimble, but you can only do that so many times without, I mean, every piece looking the same, some kind of, you know, big circular hat like we had in tiers uh, 15 14. Yeah. and 14, 
I mean, there's only so much you can do, and it, this is a really big change, which is nice. And if you think about monks, we are masters of ourselves, masters of the elements to a point, especially looking at some of the older stories. So I think this fits. I think it's really cool. It shows that we have a power over ourselves. Who cares if it's heavy? We are that badass. We are that strong. Has this, the LFR... Okay. Far... Explain the headpiece, then. Does that <laughs> the mind's eye. Awesome. Oh, I guess monks don't Has have to LFR see. We're the blind the monks now. Sets been revealed at all? I don't think the mythic. No, they have. No, the mythic. I think one is LFR, not LFR might have. So yeah, but the LFR. Pretty... Here's, the, here's the thing. The LFR is just shared among armor types, right? So all the leathers look alike. They just have okay. Different so colors. the leather one actually has the one big shoulder piece on it. The yeah, leather that, shoulder. I like that too. I think that's really nice. Yeah, I like the I like the asymmetrical shoulder. I was thinking they were probably going to go for a storm, earth, and fire type thing. Where oh, the, this, this is Earth. Right, this one's Earth and then the Mythic would So that be means fire. next year is fire? Yeah. Or That'd Mythic cool. is going to be fire. That'd be cool. I wouldn't argue my, with that. My issue with this, and it's kind of disturbed me, is that you don't have that one tier that makes everyone says, Oh, that's a monk. Right. There hasn't been a single tier. And if you were going to have it, it was going, going to be during the monk expansion. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's tier 16 was... That's pretty monkish. Uh, I mean, you got like. Uh, I would say our closest to monk is the fourteen. Yeah. No. Fourteen I, I wouldn't and even, fifteen. Fifteen was a little bit closer. Was, fourteen 15 yeah. was ninja. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh. Well. Yeah, fifteen was a little ninja. Fourteen was close. The only problem was that they picked the like the ugliest freaking colors. Yeah, bad bad color choices. And, I mean, it's yeah. like, yeah, okay, let's make him a really nice outfit. All right, send in the three-year-old to color it. It's like, come <laughs> on, guys. There just, just hasn't been that one set that makes everyone go, that's the iconic. We're all sitting here waiting for our Paladin Tier, tier 2 set to yeah. come out and say, the dojo this is said, the iconic look. The dojo said the challenge mode shoulders is the only real monk-looking item we've had. Yeah. True. And the helm is just god awful because it looks like you horrible, signed up for But the shoulder is really cool. You're off to a Shriners convention. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, that, that, uh, the PvP set. The, the dragon dragons. shoulders, yeah, those the dragon, dragon fate, shoulders are very that, nice. That is yeah. pretty cool. It's yeah, cool, the PvP, but it the doesn't PvP say monk. Sets have, the PvP sets have actually clump, come the closest to having that core monk identity. Mm. All right. Well, I think now, unless anyone else has. Anything else We're excited for it. End of story. Yes. <laughs> Some of us are we we excited says, for it. It's more about the, the fact that it's more raiding to do, not so much right. the gear we're going to get. <laughs> hey, I got, uh, transmog, I've baby. got my transmog, transmog. set from, uh, from Trally Crusader, so I'm good to go. Yeah, I'll be, probably be keeping my transmog with the uh, Shadow Pan helmet and the, I think it's the stuff out yeah, of the you three. And together. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm probably good until something like you said iconic comes out and like pulls me to it. Oh yeah, I agree with General Zod in the uh, in the dojo. We need a control to turn off the shoulders. <laughs> Have a shoulderless. They've talked about that and they said they don't want to do it that because that's part of their iconic look. Right, it's like guys, yeah. I don't want to be a linebacker anymore. Right. <laughs> no, I like big shoulders, and I cannot lie. Oh god, they need to do that with tabards. All right, conversation over. Yep, now to lift up your spirits <laughs> while the world changes around you in... The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Uplift. Don't worry, I'm sure it happens to other monks too. All right, so we've got some ability pruning going on. We've got some changes to abilities. Let's start off with... Spinning Fire Blossom, that button that doesn't even make it to our bars except for on Siegecraft or Heroic. And PvP. And PvP. Oh, Gone. Lovely for PvP. Yes. So, Spinning Not Fire no Blossom, more. which was an ability for that cost one chi, uh, sent out a blossom and would stun or root anything that's further than 10 yards if it hit, uh, directional or targeted, depending if it glyphed or not. Uh, hardly ever used. Gone. All right. Any thoughts on Rest that, Eric? Peace, in peace. Um, I mean, I, I like the ability. I think it has its uses. Um, it, I mean, it is very specific, which is definitely why I think they're getting right. rid of it. Um, it's nice if you're out exploring the world and you have those um, 
creatures like the spine crabs, the old um, rabbit-looking rat guys. Right, they like to run for it. Yeah. Exactly. You send one of those out or root them. You can come back and get them later. That's really nice. But, you know, it's it's... I think the biggest thing we're going to miss it from is in PvP situations where if you got a hunter running away from you and you've exhausted all your other forms of stuns, um, you're not going to be able to you know, but it's keep up with them to, It would be on diminishing returns with Disable now anyways. That's yeah. true. So it's yeah. a redundant ability now with the way that they yeah. have diminishing returns. So. It has a cool animation. It was always fun if yeah. you're using it on, um, on Thok. If you happen to be far away for that, using that at one of the uh, the pterodactyl type things, mm -hmm. and, watch and you just see your little fire blossom go, pew! Yeah, that's a great animation. I wish I'd keep that. Oh, I want the now, path you of can definitely see how back. the pathing goes in the game when you use something like that. Right. <laughs> All right. So mist weavers, big changes here. Uh, Duke, take it away. Sure. So they are focusing on soothing mist right now. It's not going to generate any more chi. It heals for about double what it used to before. The GCD has been lowered to 0.5 seconds, but now no longer gives that instant heal that you used to get, which was a great, great way to bring up some chi. Um, I'm not really that heartbroken about Soothing Mist going away like this. It, you know, it, It's a spell that you needed to cast because you didn't have time or really the ability to cast anything else. But with as cheap as they've made Surging Mist you're not really going to miss Soothing Mist all that much. You're not going to have to keep this channeled spell on people for as much as possible. Right. At least in Tier 17. So that that's going to be very nice. The only reason you're ever going to use Soothing Mist is in combination with Surging Mist or Enveloping Mist. Right. Just it's, for the instant cast. It's nice that they've buffed the heal output by, by 2x now, though. Yeah. So it actually... Because right now it's just a trickle. You put it on someone if it's just by itself, it's just a little trickle. Now it'll now it'll be like a tickling trickle. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and it's nice. Yeah. Now Yuki, what are your thoughts on that one? Um, the fact that it no longer generates chi, I like it. Um, because I feel like uh, at times it was very RNG. Um, mm -hmm. uh, as far as building chi, um, and to make up for that, they doubled like. Uh, Duke said they doubled the healing on it, which is awesome. Um, I'm kind of upset about the no longer giving uh, instant heals um, because you won't see us spamming big heals anymore like Surging Mists on, I guess, tanks. But at the same time, that's me thinking of well, no, Siege no, no, no. of Orgrimmar that's rating. Still, that's still staying. What they mean by no longer gives the instant heal... Um, you're still going to have the interplay of Surging Mist and Enveloping Mist be an instant while you're channeling Soothing Mist. But the way it used to work is that as soon as you would cast it, it would tick. Now yeah. it's not going to tick <coughs> for about half a second. I got you. I got yeah, so you. so you that, that's have, what's changing. You would have teams uh, like Method and Blood Legion, they would be um, if they needed a lot of chi right away, they'd have macros where they would just it would cancel the cast, so they'd just like spam one and they would get chi like crazy and get the instant heals like crazy, the soothing mist. Mm. Um, that's gone now. You can't do that. So, but um, yeah, right. um, <laughs> yeah. Now you can. Uh, yeah. Wasn't there something about the jade yeah. serpent statue as well? Um. Yeah, they're uh, reducing that cooldown uh, to ten seconds, which um, is pretty cool. Uh, I think it's 30 seconds now? Yep. Or 15? Yeah, it's 30. 30? Okay. Which is uh, pretty cool because in high movement fights, um, you're going to want to replace your statue accordingly, especially for um, the crane stance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fist weaving. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, for the stance of the red crane. Yeah, especially now that it's got that breath mm -hmm. uh, ability, you want to be able to place that quite quickly, so having a 10 second cooldown is really going to help on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, um, uh, go ahead. I, uh, I'm kind of happy about the statue being only 10 seconds, though. There were a lot of people that were talking about uh, making it instant, and I don't want it instant because that means that I'd have to change it almost every GCD. Making it 10 seconds means that you don't have to move it as often, and, and if people are running away from your statue, they deserve to die. Yep. <laughs> yep. 
I wow, well, I agree with Duke a hundred percent on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like run uh, they, into statue that heals us. Yeah. They also changed Thunder Focus T. Um this no Can longer costs Chi and this now doubles awesome. your next surging mist like it does now. Yeah, but it gets rid of that interaction with uplift. So well, that's right. They just replaced the interaction with Uplift with Renewing Mist. That's it. Yep. But now it becomes an actual 45-second cooldown that you don't have to sit there and go, oh, do I have enough Chi for this? Yeah. Oh, I guess I do. Okay, so I get the Chi and I cast it out. Oh, sorry. All right, I got it. Wait, it's still... It still I love has how you the... heal. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it still has it with, uh, with Renewing Mist, except for now what it does is it allows you to bounce to four... People? To four. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. it. So it's it's a nice way to spread your renewing mist out and a forty five second cooldown. But now it's it will... and it still doubles your surging mist. Does it? Okay. All right. Now is it? Are you going to get both effects now? Uh, no, you get one or the you other depending on other. what you cast now. Okay. So now it's actually going to be your... a choice. It's going to be a choice. Exactly. Unlike it was now. I I hate it when I hit it and then I accidentally hit surging mist and I'm like, yep. no, there goes my uplifts. Yeah, I mean, it's still going to have the 45-second cooldown, so it's mm -hmm. not going to completely go away, but it's going to be a very nice utility buff that you can use one way or the other. Yep. All right, so Windwalkers. We had all the toys, and now they're taking them one by one from us. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're making sure Brewmasters don't get out of control again. Right. Hey, what's wrong That's with what that? That's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. What's wrong with that? Yeah, I mean, what is it? So our Sansa the Fierce Tiger, they're taking that and they're uh, they're getting rid of that extra damage component, which is sad. Yep. But, but, it means that they are going to, and as they said, you know, Celestalon and others, they said that we will be getting a damage boost to our regular abilities to compensate for that. So we will feel just as powerful. It's not a it's not a ten percent nerf to the class. We're not getting red numbers like the brewmasters did for so long. Mm -hmm. oh, um, I hate those. So every, everything will be just fine. It's just a, a balancing of numbers tweak. The sky is holding steady yep. for the moment. Yep. Yeah, and it is going to be rolled back into all of your abilities too. Yeah. So you're right. you're losing it from the stance, but you're getting it on every single ability. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the main reason they're doing that is just to bring the brewmaster and uh, windwalker. Uh, back to parity, so yeah. now yeah. it's like exactly. a single ability. You take a you take a blackout kick, and it's gonna it has a different formula, different numbers, everything depending on whether you're a brewmaster or windwalker. So now they're just mm -hmm. bringing that into line, uh, so they're bouncing around that. So brewmasters had some changes too. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and take that away? Uh, well, the first one is the the ox statues no longer going to be able to shield our allies, which. I think that's a little rough. I mean, that's one of the major things that it did. And then uh, cooldown reduced down to 10 seconds. I mean, basically what that means we're getting out of our Ox, ox statue right now is the Crass Provoke on it and AoE Taunt, what's around there. Yeah. It almost feels like they should just make it so the, the Ox statue automatically AoE Taunts, considering really that's it its only utility does. at it this will. point. It um, will. It will. A small pulsing. Yeah, it does yeah. a small that, pulsing threat. Yeah, so. it's a small pulsing threat, but... I feel like it's almost like if if they put, say, Provoke and Ox Statue on the same cooldown and then made it so you could just toss your Ox Statue down and not have to put the Provoke on it because people just make macros right. to cast Provoke on it automatically. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's well, just redundant at that point. <laughs> yeah, and, and, th and they're basically doing it so that it will automatically pulse now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so that's, I mean, that's, it's designed it's, for you know the fight's ahead and you know you're going to have ads coming out. You place it there. And then you AOE taunt, and you get it. I mean, it's it's designed yeah. to be a uh, a crowd control type thing, so yeah. you're not fr yeah. like that would be really awesome right now in Garage. You have those ads <laughs> come out in Phase One. You just stick them there, and they just run right to right to there first, and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. It'd be super handy and heroic too. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not in the heroic. <sighs> Uh, I would be seeing these greatness of what it is. I'm sorry, um, but yeah, I mean that's. But that's just one thing. I wish you know because you already we already have the macros for it. It's almost like maybe when you first place it down, it'll be an automatic taunt, and then it pulses. Maybe that feel a little better. It just feels 
clunky having to cast provoke on it for that initial you know if you're trying to yeah. move it around quickly right. for no, like it, high it, movement. It really doesn't make any sense to have to target your own totem right. and taunt your totem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's almost like if maybe they just made it so if you didn't have uh, a target or if you were targeting an ally the provoke would automatically go to your to- your your statue. Ooh. Something along those lines. Ooh, I have an excellent idea. The the ox statue is filled with brew. So all the targets run, they hit it, and then when it dies, it hits them with dizzying haze. <laughs> well, <laughs> That'd be the flip side to saying, hey, everybody, hit this ox is that they're going to make it a little stronger. It's going gonna, it's gonna to last a while. It's going to last well, a couple They only said a few hits. Yeah, It doesn't a couple sound hits. like they're buffing it all that much. Uh, I, I think we'll, you're going to we'll be surprised see. when the number comes out. Yeah, we'll it see. all depends on the number of ads that are going toward, towards mm-hmm. it in you know, reality. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. Um, and then yeah. the other change is that uh, Dizzying Haze no longer ca- causes the misfire effect. You know, I know I, they say that they didn't get the intended effect from it. I mean, I just thought it was a pretty cool like flavor to the Dizzying Haze anyways. Um, yes, you're, you're adding a little bit of damage back and maybe adding, I don't know, the that's it. You know, it's almost like the monk is weaving out of the way and he's hitting himself instead. So I don't think we're really losing much with that in general. Yeah. Well, it never worked on bosses, so. Yeah. Right. It didn't work on bosses. It would be nice to see a boss punch himself in the face every now and then, though. That would be great. <laughs> be- yeah, especially I, I, with some I, big I, abilities. I'd be fun. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Annihilate. Turns around. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be great. <laughs> But I mean, all in all, there w- I don't think there were that many big changes since the, no. the first set of alpha notes. But these no, little these ones, just, with, you know, uh, these are just some some updates as we go along. We're going to be seeing a lot more of these as we go, uh, yeah. and so we'll keep you abreast of any changes that are going uh, with the monk. So keep tuned in to Monk Meditation for all the latest news. Well, now it's time to impart some tips and tricks for those raiding monks in this of fury. Uh, yeah! It's go time. All right, now we approach the final corridor as we make our way to Garage, and we find a whole bunch of bugs. Bug infestation, Paragons of the Kalaxi. Mm. The what is going on, everything is hitting weird stuff. Okay, they're dead, boss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with the Brewmaster. Why don't you go ahead? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, in in terms of, you know, my talent choices when going up against the Klaxi, I've really kind of gone for, you know, talents that work with specific bugs, you know. So, for example, I take Zoo N because I don't feel like Russian Jade Wind adds anything because you, you kind of lose out any damage that's going to the extra bosses because of, of how they heal back. So, Zoo N works really well when you have to take, a, take down Corvin Prime or Corvin the Prime in order to kind of add that extra DPS in there. I feel like it's almost a necessity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, throw the extra DPS in there when you can. You know, that and the two other choices with it really don't bring anything extra. Uh, I always take uh, the Diffuse Magic and you couple that with the Avert Harm to kind of help people survive some of the big attacks off of the boss who the Poison Mine, you know, with the red where they have to stay away from others and the blue where they have to stack up. You know, if you see someone either doing something wrong or... Um, maybe you just want to kind of help it out because you have either both that and or that combo and Zen meditation off cooldown. You can pop one just to help out your healers if they're struggling a bit. Uh, a lot of everything I do, at, at least in normal mode, is pretty much to try and help out the healers, make it easier. Um, my my team in particular, we have like, you know, not to you know, I'm not picking on anyone. We have like one really strong healer, and the other two healers are still kind of gearing up and kind of getting there. So when we plan to get into that point, we know that that's going to be where our main problem is we got the DPS. Um, me and the other tank are well geared, so it's kind of keeping the the healers in line because what we're trying to do is is push content, and that means they're lagging a little behind um, yeah. when that happens. Yeah. Um, I take leg sweep as well, and I do that for the ads that get uh, get summoned by uh, Skier the Bloodseeker uh, to help stop them before they get to the bosses to heal because. Uh, any extra, you know, healing that gets done to them equals bad. This is a <laughs> very yeah. obvious. Don't you think you should be taking um, the charging ox wave instead? Since you're going to be on a boss, be better to turn around, and fire that out. Um, we've I've kind of used it as like a like I'm the last resort. Like okay. if the 
if the boss is getting that or the ads are getting that close, I'm there ready for it. Right. Um, the, everyone else is kind of in charge of it. You know, we basically not we don't have hash markers, but you know, the we have a lot of range, so they're in charge of any stuns and everything outside. And if it's getting close enough that they're about to get there, I'm like the oh no, stun them now. So that's what we we tend to do. Um, in terms of any like clever use of our mechanics, I I don't think there are that many out there. I mean, we're kind of sitting there tanking. You know, we we put our ox statue where it goes now is to just you know help the raid out as much as possible. There's, you know, we just kind of make sure we're taking the right boss. Uh, you know, making sure to use our active mitigation to try and stop uh, the ten stacks of uh, injection. That's uh, that's key. So as long as, as much as you can keep up elusive brew and guard as possible, mm -hmm. you don't have to you know tank swap as much. Um, so you try that out as well. So uh, once you which abilities uh, are going to help with the parasites on the first boss? The parasites. Uh, which ones? Who talks about parasites? That's the injection uh, yeah. one that you have to. I think it's guard and elusive brew. Oh yeah. Yeah, like I said, well, you use you kind of switch between elusive brew and guard, trying to keep one up at all times, okay. if possible. Are there yeah, any that's other ones saying. that you know of that they can that they can pop? I'm pretty sure those, those are the are only the two because only two. Oh, okay. shuffle doesn't count, and you want to shuffle up all the time, anyways. So right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's move on to Windwalker Air. Well, I do have I do oh. have one good trick for brewmasters, and that's Zen meditation. If nobody's stacking on aim. Yeah. That's a that's a handy trick. If you just you can leave somebody alone, say no one stack. If you're in a boss, if you're in a burn phase on, on a core ball, for instance, and just pop your Zen Med, and yeah. it's fantastic. That person's not going to take any damage. All right. Okay, air. Let's see this fight. I don't like this fight. No. No. <laughs> there's a, there's, there's a lot going on. Fire. You know, if, I mean, if if you want to be the number one DPS on normal, S Storm Earth and Fire, Rushing Jade Wind, and don't care about anything, <laughs> you will see the top of the meters, but it will be no help at all. Uh -huh. So and then you get um, the only the uh, the only time uh, Storm Earth and Fire is useful on this fight is in heroic mode, when you are really trying to burn down uh, Corvin and the other guy at the same time, but the other guy just a little bit more, so Corbin puts the amber on him, and then you can burn down, finish burning down Corbin. You don't need to do that on normal. Mm -hmm. um, you should have the DPS to just burn down the amber, but otherwise, that's really the only time you need to use that talent. And uh, uh, shout out to Hina Lover for reminding me of that, too, because it's been a, a couple months now since I've seen that fight on Heroic, since our uh, first kill, so... But otherwise, a couple things you want to remember. Zen Meditation is good for soaking aim. Um, if you want to solo soak it, which is a good kind of, uh, you know, hunters have deterrent, mages can ice block, I think. So there's a few different things they can do. Um, touch of Karma, if you are going to be in the line, you can use Touch of Karma to help soak. Uh, you can use uh, Dampen Harm to help a few times, which is great. So there are, um, you know, Fortify and Brew. There are some other talents that are really good for that. So, um, with the Touch of Karma, one thing that, I, that I've noticed myself doing, so something to avoid, is uh, you see that aim go out. The first impulse is to hit Touch of Karma on the guy shooting aim, but that's going to be useless. So, you hit it on the target that you're targeting and then go stand in the aim line. Cause you, why is that? You want the DPS from getting hit to go to the boss that you're targeting not to the guy shooting aim. Unless, of course, uh, the guy shooting aim is the guy you're targeting. But, so you're going for that extra DPS a little bit right. there. There's no, there's no point in putting on the guy that's, uh, that's shooting if he's not the target. So unless, unless your priority is just soaking. Right. That's a, that's a good thing to keep in mind, definitely. Yeah. Uh, one thing is, uh, I, I saw here you said, use Transcendence when Amber is about to go down. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, your range is doing their job and staying to the outer edge of the platform, so you never get amber inside the circle, anyways. Right. But otherwise, if you do have one of those oh boy kind of moments, transcendence is a good way to kind of get out of there very quickly. Yeah. Um, transcendence so. can also be useful depending on your strategy for the poison mine uh, mm -hmm. set up at your camp if you do the camp strategy, or at least just so you can get away if you get the red. So. Yeah, but in, in in general, remember, Storm Earth and Fire, bad. Yes. 
and talents and everything like that. Try one to go in some of these. Zhuan, clear choice. Uh, unless you're cheesing the meters. But Zhuan is definitely your clear choice. Now, uh, Dampen Harm, Diffuse Magic, Healing Elixir. They're about even. I mean, really, there's not much magic going out unless you're running through Amber, which can help you there. Uh, Dampen Harm could help uh, when you're getting hit with aim, but you've got Diffuse Magic, you've got your... Uh, or, I'm sorry, you've got your Touch of Karma, you've got your uh, Fortifying Brew, and you've got all these these cooldowns to help, so you don't really need it. Healing Elixirs, they're... I notice a lot of people die in this fight, so that actually might be the best one to go with. What are your thoughts, there? That's a Band-Aid that, that, that keeps you standing in poo. Yep. So, um, I, I, I like Damp and Harm, because it does allow you the situate, if you have, it work, makes you keep your situational awareness, so you're using it when you want to use it, so you know what you're standing in. It does help for soaking aim. If you happen to get caught in Corvin's Vicious Assault, Mm -hmm. um, like some of us are no known to, <laughs> um, that's very good to pop there to give you two ticks of maybe staying alive. Um, or you just create a really nice recoil that yells whenever he casts it, yeah. which is nice too. And remember um, to use your uh, nimble brew to get out of that stun too. So mm -hmm. yeah, our nimble brew. I use that for the uh, the green line. Oh, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. 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 Vicious assault is his frontal cleave. That if you're right. Since you're melee and your tanks maybe on a tank swap, they like our death knight likes could. to turn them right into me. Yeah. Yeah. That um, you learn very quickly the where to stare at the bug's rear, mm -hmm. um, as it were. So, otherwise, yeah, talents. Um, if you want, you can use Ring of Peace if you to help disable the uh, amp little uh, amber guys, which is very important also on heroic paralysis. You're gonna get some use out of that for stunning those ads as well, because mm -hmm. you have to get some, or else you lose someone right in the beginning of the fight, and. You might, you know, I I, do, I choose Chi Wave, but you also might want to hold off using it because Chi Wave will break stuns, and that can be very annoying if you're really trying to keep a couple of those guys locked down for a while. Okay, all right, very good, Miss Weaver. Now Yuki, why don't you take it away? <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> uh, monk mechanics, like I explained before, is pretty much like every other class. Um, you're gonna want to use Nimble Brew for the whirling from. Uh, Kazrock the Locust, that's the green line that flies around if you ever get caught in it. Um, if you're a Mist Weaver, it depends on how you're healing. If you're Fist Weaving or Mist Weaving, um, you can choose either or Leg Sweep or Charging Ox Wave for the adds that come out, the Bloods. Um, I prefer Charging Ox Wave because I pretty much stay in range this entire fight. Um, unless Amber's coming out and I help DPS that. Um, Life Cocoon is good uh, for the boss that hits the tank really hard, which I think is the Vicious Assault mm -hmm. after the shield on Corvin the Prime. And as said before, uh, Zen Meditation for aim, if needed. Um, mix it up with Damp and Harm, Fortifying Brew. Um, yeah, simple healing fight. Just oh, Very, very, very important. Before uh, Black uh, black fuse, right? Siegecraft or black fuse. Mm -hmm. There's yellow puddles on the ground. These yellow puddles give you haste, and, uh, give you a buff for haste. Don't get that confused in the fight with paragons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <those laughs> yellow, yellow puddles, puddles are on the ground are bad. You don't want to stand in that. You will die very, very quickly. Uh, Blizzard likes to confuse people in the same raid. And uh, yeah, please they're bastards. Take that sorry, one thing I haven't researched. Are the little uh, when you get that buff that causes the blood healing orbs to hit the ground? Mm -hmm. What do those do? Do mm -hmm. those heal? They heal you. Okay, those so heal you. Yes. Green and red orbs that we run through now. Okay. I yes. believe you picked that out from Lucid, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I'm not sure because I always get poisoner, so I think it it's from Lucid that healers pick that out from. If I'm oh wait, that one that's different. Maybe. Lucid. Oh, uh, I'm I thinking of uh, the Bloodseeker one that you get right away that awesome. melee picks up that you click yeah, the guy. Yeah, because I keep getting that and I keep of. sending out blood everywhere. I'm like, I don't know if I should be walking through this. I'm assuming I do. Totally. 
Yes. If it's good, they do good. heal you. Yes. Too many things going on in this fight is just so impossible to keep track of. You just uh, you have your kill order and you just mark them and go at it. And suddenly there's only two left, and you're like, how did that happen? Right. <laughs> then by the end, you're like, this guy's hitting so hard, please make it stop. <laughs> your tank, you're screaming out in agony. All right, students, it's time now to meditate and expand our knowledge in... Transcendence. Transcendence. Okay, so we had our Crash Course video on Windwalkers that came out uh, a few weeks ago. So mm -hmm. I want... Our host knowledge here. Uh, if they were to make a Mistweaver and Brewmaster one, what would you put in there? Anyone have any thoughts? You know, I was I uh, was really thinking about this when you were talking about you know obviously with Brewmaster, and I almost feel like it shouldn't only be a Brewmaster one. I only almost feel like they need to put like a crash course in tanking out yeah. on there. <laughs> you know, yes, you want to show them shuffle and stuff, but I think certain things just like like what line of sight is and, and like basic concepts for tanking would be more beneficial than really the abilities that we get mm -hmm. you know throw a monk in there and say oh this is shuffle make sure you have it up all the time you know this is guard because those i think are the two you know primary things you want to have up but yeah. make it more of about tanking and less about brewmaster in general mm -hmm. um would be more beneficial you know you sh like i said shuffle guard line of sight all the different things like that you know don't let dads look at your, your allies, stuff like that. Right. If I were going to make a, a a crash course for Brewmaster, I'd focus on keg smash and dizzying haze. Especially, you know, you're going to use dizzying haze on the pool and you're going to keg smash on cooldown. And then at that point, it pretty much turns into the rest of the Windwalker one. Okay, you're going to jab for chi and you're going to tiger palm for the, pump, for the punch and then you're going to blackout kick as soon as you can. And just, you're going to use Blackout Kick to keep shuffling up. Mm -hmm. And essentially, you're done at that point. You might want to go into Guard, maybe. But if you want to teach someone the very, very basics of Brew Mastering, all you need to do is tell them, hey, instead of Rising Sun Kick on cooldown, you're going to Keg Disney Smash on hates. cooldown. Yeah, keg Smash on cooldown. Yeah, that's a good, good idea. I mean, the only thing I would say, especially if it's someone going into raiding as a as a brewmaster if that's like their their goal and i know it's like a starter course but at the point where you're talking about tanking that's kind of where you might look at they have to be careful because i've had like a fellow tank who uses keg smash too much when i'm trying to main tank and he pulls everything away from me right <laughs> so it's like that's why i was like sticking to almost like single target things to for so like a beginner because yeah it, you can yeah, but the the, the, the the weaken attacks buff that is given is, by Keg Smash is very nice, yeah. especially if you're looking to survive a bit. Mm -hmm. Speaking um, of Keg Smash pulling all the things, dang it, Duke, <laughs> in your garage. It's like all the little ads come up. He goes, Keg I Smash. I apologize for doing. I apologize for doing 600k DPS. God damn it! <laughs> 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 all right, and that's with on a 10% debuff on a Mistweaver. Hmm. Uh, this tweet is hard. Yeah, I mean, team management, I guess. Um, I don't know, uh, you can almost mist management. I don't think we need to teach people how to use their chi and how to use their mana. I'm hoping that we can just tell them, here's how these spells work, and they're smart enough to kind of go off on their own. I mean, you're basically teaching people about, hey, welcome to the Timeless Isle, and now let's go kill some snakes or something. Right. So what's the very basic thing you would tell someone if, oh, you want to learn how to be a mist weaver? Fist weaver. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, fist weave. So, so let's discuss fist weave. So rising sun kick from the windwalker one and replace every time you say windwalker with mist weaver. Good to go. <laughs> yeah, basically you're going to replace rising sun kick with uplift. Uh, and with next expansion, you be good to go. It doesn't, don't even have to remove rising sun kicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I, we're, we're, we're not really that complicated when you get right down to it. The complication is more in when do I use these abilities? Right. And there's no three-minute video that's going to teach that. Yeah, I, I guess if you were doing one for the actual mist weaving instead of fist weaving, I mean, I, w I would put in uh, yeah. the interaction between soothing mist, enveloping mist, and surging mm -hmm. mist, and indicate that surging mist and enveloping mist have cast time unless you're interacting with soothing mist. And then go over Renewing Mist as well and how that tracks. Probably don't go into Thunder Focus T and Uplift because that starts getting a little too much for that basic. 
but that'll that'll get you through dungeons. See, that's when it gets difficult because as you explain that, you also have to explain the glyphs that go with those spells. Right. Necessarily. Because they treat yeah. they treat the spells differently. Healing, the surging mist glyph goes anywhere randomly to the lowest uh, player that needs heals the most. Yeah, if you don't have a glyph, you're, you're five players. Let's in assume a we're running a dungeon. Oh, yeah, dungeon. We're, we're running yeah. a dungeon. You're mainly focusing on the tank, and occasionally somebody else does something stupid and they get hit. Right. Occasionally. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Occasionally, for any variable in time from immediately after the last one to 30 minutes later. So. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope they actually put out some of those some of those guides. I like what they did with the with those uh, with those guides, and I I hope they continue. I uh, the Windwalker one. I really wish they would put Fist of Fury in there, but that's all right. All right. Well, I think now it's time to travel to the Peak of Serenity, the home for all monks in... Zen Pilgrimage. Monks, assemble! All right. If Dojo has any questions, feel free to hit them up in the dojo. We will take care of them. So the first thing I want to talk about is all monk flex team. We're going to be going Hmm. again, but this time there's a twist. A twist? Yes. Horde versus Alliance, same time. What? Yes. We're still trying to figure out the details. We're either going to do a, a timed, so who can get the furthest in two to three hours, or we could go no holds barred. First one to garage and down him wins. So... If you are interested in taking part in this, uh, we are still trying to determine which day to do it. It's going to be a Saturday sometime this month. Uh, We're not doing it this Saturday, but it may be the Saturday after. So visit cheeburst.com. We'll have the link in the show notes as well. Uh, And let me just drop it into the dojo right now. And uh, Hmm. Come on, Alliance. Come out there and show the horde that they can't be. So visit that, and let us know what day works them. best for you, and then we will uh, we'll figure out the best day and we'll go. Uh, I have this dream of a certain deep voice commenting, doing commentary on it, <laughs> bouncing between the first and the second. I'm going to be at work. Alliance. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the other deep voice. The other deep voice. <laughs> So I'm going to see if we can get that to work. I've, I've reached out to him, so we'll see. Uh, that would be fantastic. Um, and then, Remember, Jade is now Alliance. I know. She um, certainly so is. I, w- I reached out to her. I said, hey, when would be a good time? She says, I don't have a horde monk anymore. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. good on you. No. She um, transferred to Airy Peak. Yep. She's raiding <laughs> on working as intended. <laughs> well done. So we have an opening for someone if they want to organize and or, and or lead the Horde Flex. Yep. Uh, visit the cheapburst.com forums, uh, and it's in the PVE forum, sub-forum. Uh, so visit that post on there. Let us know if you're interested in, re- in raid leading that. And we'll, uh, we'll work together to figure out rules and baselines, like base item levels, things like that that we'll take. So... All right. Uh, anything come up in the dojo while I was yapping? Fairly quiet today. Yeah. It's a quiet dojo. Everyone's meditating out, it looks like. Nope. They're mediating as... Uh... <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's go on to shout-outs. Now, Yuki, got anything? Uh, yep. As usual, shout-out to Edamami Enterprise. Um, for rating hard, uh, shout out to the dojo for showing up, and a shout out to all the listeners who download us and listen. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, the did the General Zod. What is he doing in the dojo? Uh, thoughts on Chi Serenity for for the Brewmaster perspective. Um, that I one I believe is where you get ten seconds of spam anything you want. 
Ooh. I would have to look that up real quick. <laughs> I'm trying to you think. enter a state of mental and physical serenity for 10 seconds. While in the state, all cheat consumptions are instantly refilled. That's an interesting well, that's one because right. you have to have the chi before you can spend it. Yeah, you just go up to that's four. That's the only then... real. Yeah, so yeah, you go up to four or five and you, mm-hmm. you, you go hog wild. And the only thing I can really see this for is spamming blackout kick. Yeah, yeah that's what I was just thinking too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking the same thing spam blackout kick to get your shuffle, you know. I mean, in 10 seconds, like, that's. Set up. Six blackout kicks, so that's thirty seconds of shuffle. Yeah, because you're gonna yeah. get um, you just hit double chi brew, and then chi serenity, blackout mm-hmm. kick, get your shuffle, and I'm assuming that would still count as chi spent, which would oh that that doesn't interact with uh, elusive no. brew, no, no elusive brew is crits. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's crits. crits, but still you probably get a lot of crits on those blackout kicks. So uh, it's auto attack crits. Oh well, never mm-hmm. mind then. So <laughs> basically we can I build keep trying to really cheese it but you're not letting me point. cheese. <laughs> no, um, no, no. However, windwalkers can cheese them. Yeah. Oh. So dirty. Um yeah, you double tap and pull get four chi, then you just do blackout kicks like crazy, get your shuffle up. So that'd be really good on the pull, especially early on in the tier when your survivability is at its yeah. lowest. Uh, so I imagine the first part of the tier you're going to be using Chi Serenity more than Chi Explosion. As you get a lot more control, Chi Explosion, Chi Explosion will probably be a lot more powerful because you'll be able to manage your Chi a lot easier uh, as you get more more stats. So it's probably the way that I would go. I see it yeah. going. Hmm. Now Hina Lover in the chat says, this is what you do for a Windwalker. It's Rising Sun's Kick, Blackout, 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 Rising Sun's Kick, Fizz of Fury. Fury. Yeah. Because it's you'll, you'll get, done. That'll be the last bit of snapshotting we get is be able to snapshot that <laughs> a few seconds of Fist of Fury with a uh, free chi. So now, how does this stack up versus chi explosion? Uh, see, I I think it's more based on control versus versus damage because with chi explosion, uh, if I recall correctly, when you do three, uh, you get basically the effect of blackout kick plus a uh, purify. And yeah. I forget what it does at four. I think it does AOE damage or something. I, I don't have it up in front of me, but uh, I, I, I have you... it up here, basically for uh, Brewmaster. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Uh, for Brewmaster at three, it purifies all your staggered damage, and it does 135 percent of attack power, and you gain two shuffle plus two seconds per chi consumed. So you'll get. Uh, da, 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 da. You'll get about eight seconds of shuffle, I think it is, at three chi. Mm-hmm. And then what does it do? At four? The math right? it just AOE damage, or at four it hits everybody for if, if, within eight yards. Okay, so four would be an AOE damage plus purify plus shuffle, plus regular damage plus ten seconds of shuffle. Okay. Hmm. Just pretty good for. Let me see. I'm trying to find. Yeah, but the you win- get sixty seconds of shuffle versus ten seconds of shuffle. Uh, you'd probably get about 30 seconds of shuffle. Well, what what I mean is if, if you go with Chi Serenity, you have 60 seconds of shuffle right off the bat with uh, yeah. with Chi Explosion. You can do the double double brew to get your four, and then you'll get 10 seconds of shuffle and one button click. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be... It's going to be how much survival you're going to need right off the bat, how much... Uh, control you're going to need later on in the fight um whether and, you... and and don't forget it spends all your chi right so hopefully you don't need a guard right after chi yeah, explosion it's, because uh, it's going to replace blackout kick for you you're going to be casting it often yeah mm-hmm. i don't think that chi explosion is going to be very handy for for brewmasters no you know i really think it's going to be the the soul dance I brought it up in really kind of mm-hmm. about it. I think Soul Dance will be the choice at uh, at level 100 between them all. Yeah, yeah. If there's some, if there's magic damage in the fight, yeah, it's going to be Soul yeah. Dance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I you mean, have a pure physical fight, then I I honestly don't see uh, Chi Explosion being very useful just because the biggest power that a Brewmaster has is being able to pull Chi and use it when needed. And here, mm-hmm. every time that you hit that button, which you're going to have to do to get Shuffle... It's gone. All of your cheese gone. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, 
Yeah, I don't think it's going to be too helpful, but it's going to be fantastic for Windwalkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think Chi Serenity is going to win out anytime you're not doing Soul Dance and Chi Explosion is going to be the kind of thing you do solo. Yeah, and I think mm-hmm. I th- honestly think Chi Serenity, though, is definitely going to be early in the tier. The first, mm-hmm. uh, the first tier of content yeah. is going to be all Chi Explosion because you're ne- going to need that upfront damage. And uh, Serenity. Chi Serenity, sorry. <laughs> sorry. All these Chi spells. Okay. I liked what Sunnier was tweeting out last week saying, why don't you call it this? This being... What is this? Uh, they, well, no, they, they, she, she was like, <laughs> sorry. She was tweeting out a bunch of stuff. It's like, hey, instead of calling the spell Chi, chi blah, blah, Serenity, blah, chi what if we go over to something like this? I'd have to pull up her tweet from like last Wednesday. But right. She's basically <laughs> saying... Yeah, let's There's get a whole bunch of thing. other yeah. stuff you can do. Why is everything chi blank? All right, someone asked about cookies. Uh, cookies, cookies. Why not warlocks? I like cookies. Chocolate. Chocolate chip. Uh, Dark Lady asked what flavor cookies should she bring to BlizzCon. Oh, All of them. Cookies. <laughs> that is the right Cookie answer. Flavored cookies flavored cookies. <laughs> All of them. All of the flavors. Actually, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, point this out for myself is I am allergic to peanuts so any cookies that don't involve so peanut peanuts butter? or tree nuts either so anything that's nutless Okay. <laughs> no nuts for lunch uh, got it he, he likes his cookies like he likes his dogs <laughs> <laughs> oh, <you're amazing. laughs> oh man Eric did they ever hot fix your, hot fix your, um, your fireworks why would they? I I got the tweet from Celestalon saying that this is an intended working thing. as intended. Yeah, I am. That's so where they got their the fireworks are working as intended. Now that <laughs> I discovered that engineering has the ability to create fireworks and special Pandaria fireworks, you can learn recipes from. And with for the cost of one bar, one ghost iron bar, you can make uh, ten fireworks. So. Oh boy. Um, I now have fireworks macro to my potions to my tiger's eye broom. Um, I am hurting for bag space before a raid night. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's, but it's you've got celebra- plenty after you're done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, now, so I, just, nice. I just want to know. I just want to know one thing. Tiger Crane typed in Windwalkers instead of Windwalkers. Was that intentional? Because if so, that's awesome. Yes, we are Windwalkers. Windwalkers. All right. So <laughs> exactly. Tiger Crane asks, "What is the number one talent you absolutely can't wait to play with?" Um. I like the Chi Explosion, but I also like... We still have that seven-sided strike-like one where we bounce between all of the Meh. all the targets, right? I think that's going to be fun. I, I, I want to see what the animation looks like, yeah. and then I'll decide. Right. If it's shiny and awesome, fantastic, I will use it, but I'm, I'm, I am looking forward to Chi Serenity yeah. and the the massive blackout kick, Rising Sun kick, and Fist of Fury spam that shall commence. No, Chi That'll Explosion be fun is in not going to be too bad either with us being able to to because we get chi so quickly um though Hopefully. now that we're not going to be gc the energy capped, regen issue so yeah. the, the idea with the slower uh energy regen via or the slower the increased energy of jab that might slow that down just a little bit especially at the beginning of the tier so right. which well, is I mean, going to be fantastic for chi serenity because we, we need a beta we need right. a beta yeah, we need to test things out. But. We need a beta, and we got to send one? people like Hinalova in, and mm-hmm. Calligraphy, and Rotan, <laughs> Rotan, and just have yeah. them tell us what what's going on. What's the, what's the deal? What's yeah. the deal, bro? What's the deal? I uh, The one talent I'm looking forward to playing with is actually Breath of the Serpent. Yes, that should be fun with Misery. I, I, I want to see how useful that's going to be, honestly. Because a fire-breathing totem is going to make every shaman jealous. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Cal brought up one of Sunday's year's tweets, Thundering Ox Protection, which... Yep. Hmm. Sounds, Sounds like a dirty. Japanese condom. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yep, that's... <there> <laughs> I was trying to figure out a, a proper proper wording for that, but you, you got Air, it. Eric, can you go find some Thundering Ox Protection? <laughs> that sounds world Chinese, yeah. then... Japanese. Yeah. Does it? Yeah, you racist. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Although, All right, guys. I think you're it's... thinking highly of yourself if you're calling it thundering ox. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, Aaron, you got any uh, got any shout outs? Oh yeah, hey, shout out to Golden. 
from the uh, Monkcraft podcast. He actually had me on as a, for an interview of, for a new segment he has on. So it's um, more community spotlight kind of thing. So check that out. It's really neat. It was a lot of fun being on that show. And uh, if you're looking for the more in-depth theory crafting, things like that, I highly recommend checking out that podcast. It's definitely part of my rotation as well. Yep. So shout out time. to him. Yeah, you did really good on that too. So Aww. well done. <laughs> All right, Guanchu, you got any shout outs? Uh, yeah, to uh, my raid team, the Marmot Punters. We uh, we're doing <laughs> great. Um, <laughs> if if, um, if if one person I think is listening from the t- from the team because other people don't tend to listen to podcasts, it's Laura Donna, my healer. She does a great job at healing me, and keeping me alive. Uh, on that, um, you, I'm going to pin my show too. <laughs> you Go can you can come and listen to me talk about Heroes of the Storm, which still doesn't have Chen Storm Stout. I'm very angry. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on the uh, I know, he's right there, he's on everything, but uh, we record every Friday night on Twitch, and we're part of Catalyst Gaming as well, we do it at 10 o'clock Eastern time, uh, follow us and you can find out stuff at the Nexus Podcast. Alright, perfect, and uh, I want to give a shout out to the Converted Podcast, uh, they had me on as a guest on Memorial Day, uh, that was mm-hmm. a blast, they asked a lot of monk questions, and I, uh, I blew their mind with the monk knowledge. <laughs> Like how Windwalker's multiplicative, they're like, what? So that was fun. They do they do stuff. They do stuff. Windwalkers. Windwalkers. Yep. And if you are on Airy Peak, check out that uh the Converts Raid uh, if you're in the Converts Raid Guild, check out the Alone is it Alone? That guild? Yes. Alone. Alone, yeah, the number one yeah. twenty five man team. I believe they're top thirty uh for the server? Mm-hmm. Or for for the world, for I the mean. World, yeah. uh, or for I, the US USEU. Yeah, they're they're. I think they're top thirty U.S. I don't know what they are for world. Yeah. I'd have to look that but up. If you're in the CTR guild, check out their forms because they will uh, alone is going to pick one random person. Actually, I think that's over now. I think they've already closed that. But they're going to pick one person and uh, run them through heroic, give them all the gear and the mount. So a very 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 cool thing done by uh, on, uh, some really nice people. Uh, the leadership on that guild is fantastic, and a lot of good members of that guild. So it's a really neat kind of community that's been growing right. on Airy Peak. And uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, there are 83 in the West. 83 uh, alone is 83. Sorry, sorry alone, but yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the one of the you know top 100 easily top 100 guild giving away mm-hmm. a full 25 man heroic run to a CTR member is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, eighty three in the West, but twenty one for the U S. That's okay. That's what that's it is. impressive. Yeah. That's very impressive. All right, guys, I think it's time to put away the brew. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at those awesome five star reviews we didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shane, we haven't got any five star reviews this week, but let us know what you think. Uh, check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, Twitch. All the typical places, leave your reviews there. So please rate us on iTunes, subscribe on YouTube, twitch.tv. As part of the Monk community, if you have a blog, website, or person you want to see in the show, please reach out to us via email at show at monkmeditation.com. The Monk community is the best one in the world of Warcraft. We want to showcase it. Daikatsu, how can the dojo best reach us? Well, you can follow the show at monk underscore meditation. You can find Chai T at wow monk. Now Yuki is at now Yuki underscore CTR. Air is at Air Walker. I can be found at Daikatsu CTR, no underscore. And Guanshu can be found at Geek of Random. All right, thank you all for listening. You can watch us live June 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. 100 UTC at twitch.tv slash wowmonk. Or after the fact on iTunes, Stitcher, Twitch, YouTube, and monkmeditation.com. Monk Meditation is part of the Catalyst Gaming Media Group. For other great gaming blogs, podcasts, and events, please visit CatalystGamingMedia.com. That wraps up this episode of Monk Meditation. May your bruise be strong and your heart stronger. <laughs> <laughs>